Okay, so we're going to look at problems 731 and 733 here. Those are on page 295 of your text. You might want to pause the video here and uh, open up your text to page 295. Read through 731 and 733 so you're kind of understanding what we're doing. And then restart your, your video. So the problem statement says to maximize profit 5x plus y subject to 2x plus y less than or equal to 120 and 2x plus 3y less than or equal to 240. So my variables are x and y, and those represent some, some product, x and some product y. I want to know how many of each I need to produce. That's going to be calculated in these cells to generate the maximum profit, which will be generated in this cell. I have a formula in this cell, sum product, dollar sign b dollar sign 4, uh, dollar sign c dollar sign 4, comma, b5, 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 b5 c, c5. Now here I have operation A and operation B and my constraints for those two operations. Now the uh, problem statement says to uh, solve it graphically. We're going to use linear programming because we want to look at, in this discussion, the answer field, the answer report, and the sensitivity report. So we would go up and take data, and we would take solver, and subset the objective. The objective is this cell. We want to profit. Maximize by changing variable cells B4 and C4, subject to the constraints that the total hours used for each operation is less than or equal to the constraints of each operation. And that's OK. And let's see what we have. D, uh, dollar sign D5, that's here. Changing variable cells before C4, that's there. Constraints, D8, D9, that's here. And F8, F9. That's there. So I have the problem set up correctly. I have it in solver correctly. Make the unconstrained variables non-negative. I have that checked. Simplex LP, I have that uh, selected. So I solve. Solver says we have an answer. We're going to slide it right over here for right now. Uh, just a little bit over there. I'll bring it back in a minute. So my production would be 30x and 60y. I'm going to get a profit of $510. My hours used, I've used all the A operation hours, and I've used all the B operation hours. And that's a solution. I can keep that solution, and I think I'm going to. I'm also going to select answer report and sensitivity report. And then I'm going to say OK. You notice Excel has put the answer report and the sensitivity report right down here in these two sheets. Let's look at those. The answer report is basically the answers to my linear programming problem. The objective function was profit. Original value was 0. Final value is 510. Production for x, production a, that would, think would, uh, would be for production a. Uh, that's originally 0, now it's 300, production of x, production of y is 60. Operation A hours used is 120, operation B hours used is 240. The status of these two constraints is binding, I have no additional uh, hours. The status is binding and there's no slack. So that's what my answer report tells me. What about my sensitivity report, because this is really the the, the more, more uh, informative report. It's divided into two sections, the variable cells and the constraint cells. They're headed variable cells and constraint cells. References the cell, what it is, production of x, production of y. Notice how the sensitivity report included production x, production y. It got that from this cell and this cell, combined them. Production X, production Y. So the sensitivity report combines that so you can, it's more easily used and more easily recognized. It tells me my final values are 30X, production of X is 30, 60Y, production of Y is 60. 
Reduced cost. What does reduced cost mean? If the value of one of the uh, operations or, or the productions was zero, in other words, I did not produce any x, the optimal solution was a zero x and some number of y, there would be a value in here. And that reduced cost is the amount by which the objective function coefficient for x uh, has to be changed before I would get a viable production of x. In other words, how much do I have to reduce the cost of this item before this would become non-zero? Or I would produce any. In this particular problem, and in most problems you're not going to have that, but in a lot of problems, some problems when you have uh, many, many items, you, you might get that. You, you could get that. Now, what does this one, the objective coefficient, mean? What, is, what does it mean? Well, it was 5 and it was 6. It's just telling me what the objective coefficient for my uh, objective function was. This one, allowable increase. This value tells me how much I can increase the objective coefficient for x and still have these two same results values. In other words, let's put it another way. I can increase this uh, objective coefficient 12 to 12. 7, 5 plus 12, 7 equals 12. I can increase it that much before this final results would change. The profit would change, but this final results values would not change. An allowable decrease, I can decrease this coefficient by 1, in other words, reduce it to 4, before, and not change this final value. Profit would change, but not this final value. For production y, the allowable increase to that coefficient is one and a half or a dollar and fifty, and the allowable decrease is three and a half or three fifty. So I could increase this coefficient or the price of this item, selling price for it, to seven dollars and fifty cents, and still this would be my optimal solution. I'd increase profit, but this would still be my optimal solution. In the constraint area, what it's telling me is that the operation A hours used is 120 and the operation B hours used is 240. The shadow price is related to the constraint right-hand side. For every single unit, I increase or could increase the right-hand side of the constraint. Every single unit of increase will yield 0.75 or 75 cents additional profit. So if I could increase the right-hand side of this constraint to 121, I would increase my total profit by 75 cents. And this holds true through this allowable increase and allowable decrease range. So I could continue to increase the constraint on the, if I had the capability of doing it on the right hand side to 120 to, to actually be 240. And every time I would get 75 cents more profit. Now this only holds true for one constraint at a time. In other words, you couldn't make this increase to both of them. That would throw it off. That, that would change this, the, these values back here then. Okay, now we're going to look at that in a little bit more. We're going to play around with that a little bit with uh, a couple of the other problems, or a couple of the other parts of this. So it says in B, if a technical breakthrough occurred that raised the profit per unit of X to 8, would this affect the optimal solution? In other words, if I raised this coefficient to 8, would it affect the optimal solution? Well, no, we can see right here it wouldn't because it says I have an allowable increase of 7. And 8 is only an increase of 3. This final value would not change. Profit would change. 
but not these values. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's go back over here and uh, let's clear these values. We'll delete those values. Um, let's change this to 8 because that's what the B part is asking me to do. Let's call solver. Oh, I forgot to, forgot to hit enter on that. Let's call solver. And let's clear it. Reset everything. Okay, reset it all. Now the only change I've made is I've increased the objective function for x to 8 as asked to do in uh, problem number 731b. Set my objective function. That's there. Still maximizing by changing these cells subject to the constraints. Add those constraints. That's these guys. Less than or equal to these guys. Tell it that's okay. Simplex LP, unconstraints non-negative, D8, D9, less than equal F8, F9, D8, D9, less than equal F9, F8, okay. Changing cells here, okay. Let's see what we get. Solve. Says it's got a solution. Notice, still 30 and 60. Just what it was before. So the answer to B is no. It would not affect the op optimal solution. Profit changes, but I'm going to tell it this is, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to, I'm going to cancel this. Okay? I canceled it and everything went back where it was. Remember, what did I sensitivity report say? It said I could increase it 7 units. I could go from 5 to 12. That's my allowable increase without changing this final value. Profit changed, but not the mix of product. Now, C says, instead of an increase in the profit coefficient x to 8, suppose the profit was overestimated and should only have been 3. Does this change the optimal solution? Well, I don't have to go back to my spreadsheet. I don't have to go back and run solver again. I can look right here at my sensitivity report and see that my allowable decrease is 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. I can decrease this to 4 without changing the final value. So the answer to C is, yes, it would change the optimal solution. And if you wanted to play with those numbers yourself, you would find something like, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I think X becomes 0 now, and uh, profit becomes, uh, Y becomes 80, and profit becomes 480. And you could play with that yourself and see what happens. And when you did that, because... Uh, this x value is going to go zero, you would get a reduced cost here. And you can see what that reduced cost means. Let's look down now at 733. Um, how much could the profit on x increase or decrease without changing the values of x and y in the optimal solution? We've just answered that, haven't we? We see the allowable increase and the allowable decrease. So we can see what happened. Now remember, this is only valid for one at a time. We can't do them both. But we see that. We see it right here. Let's look at B in 733. Now we're talking about the constraints. B in 733 talk about the constraints. Let's run through those again. This was my final results. And this is the shadow price. The shadow price is how much profit will increase for every unit I increase the constraint right-hand side. Remember which constraint is the right-hand side? Let's go back to our problem. This is the right-hand side of the constraint, and this is the left-hand side of the constraint. When I calculate a value in here, that's the left-hand side of the constraint. The right-hand side is the constraints I'm operating under. Back to the sensitivity report. So shadow price is the increase in profit for every unit 
increase in the right hand side constraint and the allowable and de the allowable decrease and the allowable increase are the range that that's valid for so 120 plus 120 is 240 so if I could increase that right hand constraint up to 240 this would stay valid if I was talking about the uh, the the B line operation B hours there the shadow price is a dollar seventy five for every hour that I can increase this right hand constraint or every unit whatever we're measuring every unit of increase will increase profit a dollar and seventy five cents so the question in C says if the right hand side of constraint one and that happens to be X in this case if the right hand side of constraint one were increased by one unit how much would the profit increase 75 cents let's go back to the problem and see if that's true I'm going to change this back to five because that's the original problem and it says the right hand side of constraint one and this is constraint one is increased by one unit that becomes 121 how much would the profit increase well, let's clear these values so we don't have any problem there we put this back to five and this to six so the only change now is we have added one unit of time to this constraint y constraint constraint x i'm sorry it's called solver we're going to clear everything reset everything okay what do i want to do my objective function is here maximize variable cells are here constraints here less than or equal to constraints move this over so I find that here okay looks all right simplex non-negative d8 d9 d8 d9 f8 f9 F8, F9, B4, C4, D5. Let's solve that. Look what happened to profit. Increased 75 cents. I'm going to say OK here. Go down here and look at this sensitivity report. What did it say would happen? Would increase 75 cents. That's exactly what happened. Now let's look at C. If the right-hand side of constraint one were increased by 10 units, how much would the profit increase? Well, let's look at our sensitivity report. I have an allowable increase of 120, so I can, in I can increase it that much. And for each single unit of increase, I get 75 cents increase in profit. So if I increase it by 10 units, I'd get 10 by 10 times 75, wouldn't I? Or other, in other words, I would get $7.50, right? And you can play with that yourself. You can set this up and play with that yourself and see what you get. That's the value of your sensitivity report. You can see what it does right here. You can see how sensitive your, your model is, how it changes, how changes to the objective coefficient influence the outcome, and how changes to the right-hand constraint changes the outcome. Uh, you're going to see a problem similar to this in your homework. So you might want to take a look at this, go through it a couple times. Be ready to ask any questions that you happen to have from this. And I thank you very much for your attention.